Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Heidi Kudarzi. I am a dermatologist and a pediatric dermatologist and mom of three. And today I want to talk to you about dry skin. What is dry skin? What causes it? Who gets it? What can we do about it? And all that good stuff. I just want to set the record straight that this is about dry skin and not about eczema. And they're very different things. So dry skin basically just means skin that feels rough about it. Eczema has the dry skin, but in addition, it has redness, inflammation, and itchiness. So we gotta separate these things because I see a lot of kids in the office that have eczema that is not treated, and the parents say, I've tried everything and nothing works. But you've tried everything for dry skin and that takes care of the dry skin, but you haven't used any prescriptions that take care of the inflammation part of eczema. So this is really, really important. And I know there's a lot of marketing on moisturizers about heals eczema or treats eczema, and those are just false because eczema has three components. It has dry skin, genetic components, and um, environmental factors that cause an inflammation. And unless you use anti-inflammatory medications, it is not going to make a difference. But Today we're gonna to focus on dry skin. Our skin is made of multiple levels. The job of the top layer of our skin is to create a barrier against outside. Things that are inside won't go outside, things that are outside won't come inside. So when that barrier is not as tight, you can imagine that the water that is in our skin and in our cells kind of gets out easier. And on the same note, the pathogens, the bacteria, the viruses, and allergens, things that we could develop allergies to, can get in easier. So it's very important to keep this barrier tight. So who gets dry skin? Anyone can get dry skin. Some forms of severe dry skin happen early in life and are part of a broad range of diseases called ichthyosis. There is usually a family history of someone who has very severe scaly skin. We usually refer to them as like the fish scale. Those are the severe form of um, dry skin that happen early on in life. And for that, you should definitely see a pediatrician, dermatologist, or a pediatric dermatologist. But aside from those, there are many other reasons that could cause dry skin. There's a range of diseases and medications that could cause dry skin, such as like thyroid disease, kidney disease, um, oral retinoids that um, are medications for acne. There's also hormonal um, dryness, such as um, dryness that happens in postmenopausal women. The There's environmental factors that could cause dryness in all of us include low humidity in desert and dry parts of the country, cold, windy weather, excessive air conditioning or heater, especially those direct heaters. Um, those are very drying to the skin. Excessive bathing, using hot water, using harsh soaps and cleansers, rough clothing, and very relevant to the times right now, use of topical agents that have alcohol in them, um, such as hand sanitizer. If you expose any skin to these conditions, they'll get dry. Once the dry skin has become itchy or rashy, then you've developed a dermatitis, and that's a whole nother subject. So what can we do to help the dryness and to combat some of the roughness or the scaliness that happens to our skin? There's some very simple steps. Limit exposure to extreme temperatures, really cold or really hot and dry. So the main treatment for dry skin, not a surprise, it's a moisturizer, emollients. So what are the good emollients and how do you apply them? There are many good moisturizers and emollients on the market. You just need to remember that the heavier they are, the better they work. So ointments are better than creams, creams are better than lotions, and so on. So if you have severe dryness, stick with an ointment, or at least stick with the ointment on very dry areas or for a couple of days until you feel better, and then switch to the creams. And then the easiest one to rub on, obviously, is a lotion, but we have to know that it's not as effective. The second most important thing is the showering bathing. Use lukewarm water. Hot water is the worst thing for skin. Now, let me give you an example. If you have a greasy pot or pan, how do you clean it? 
you put it in hot water and you use detergent on it and then the grease goes away and it's squeaky clean, right? You don't wanna do that to your skin because remember we said the lipids, those fatty acids and ceramides and cholesterol is what makes that barrier function the best. So you don't wanna strip your skin of those natural oils. So you don't wanna use hot water and detergent. You wanna limit your exposure to hot water and detergent. Um, so you do wanna use lukewarm water, try to do shorter showers, use a very gentle soap, and once you get out of a bath or a shower, you have three minutes to apply moisturizer head to toe. So this becomes very important in children that also have dry skin or children have eczema, that you get them out of the bath and you just damp dry them and put a lot of moisturizer on them at least once a day. And then throughout the day, you need to reapply moisturizer as many times as you can. Now, if there is a particular Part of the body, say our hands, we call it the new mother dermatitis because we wash bottles, we wash, we change diapers, we wash dishes, we have household chores, we go outside, we want to clean our hands, we want to sanitize our hands. So the hands get very dry because of this constant exposure to solvents, to um, detergents, and to water. So, what can we do? First, wear gloves. There are 100% cotton gloves that you can get at a drugstore, super easy. What I recommend to the patients is put a layer of ointment on. It could be Vaseline, it could be Aquaphor, it could be Vaniply, it could be any moisturizing ointment you can get on the market. And then put your cotton gloves and go to sleep with them. It's not the sexiest look, but it's very effective. Overnight, it really helps heal the dry, cracked skin. So we talked about taking short showers, taking showers or baths with lukewarm water as opposed to hot water, um, damp drying the skin and moisturizing immediately after and then as many times as we can during the day. It is important to find a moisturizer that you like or your child likes. Why? Motherhood, parenthood is a struggle as it is. I don't want you to have the battle over moisturizer. If there is a moisturizer that feels good, then you're more likely to use it. So that becomes very important. Some of the great moisturizer brands that I like are Aquaphor, CeraVe, Think Baby, Mostella, um, Aveeno, Vani Cream. Super clean product for people with sensitive skin. Speaking of sensitivity, when you don't have a sealed barrier, you allow allergens and bacteria and viruses to get in. So the chances of reacting to things in the environment gets higher. So that is another good reason that you should moisturize. So as we enter fall and winter and the weather gets cold and dry and we have the heater, uh, we have the heater on, and obviously we're in a pandemic, so we wash our hands or sanitize our hands more, it is very important to moisturize multiple times a day. I hope this helped. Please let me know what you thought. And if this was helpful, if you have any questions, I try to incorporate um, the dry skincare into every eczema video too. So I'll talk about it again briefly in the context of eczema, but I wanna know what your questions are so I can answer them. Please subscribe to my channel and submit your questions so I can make more and more videos. See you next time.